welcome to Studio Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers watching, as well as all those who mother, whether it's a friend, a relative, a neighbor, or even a pet. It's all life-changing to those people, especially right now. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's happening this week. Well, we're home. <laughs> <laughs> we did move all of the warehouse stuff back to the warehouse since we can now go back over there. Yeah, you can see. Um, even though the quarantine uh, has been lifted somewhat, we're still following the doctors and scientists' advice. And we are personally continuing to stay at home except for necessary outings. And we'll do that for the next few weeks to see how things shake out. So uh, please be cautious when you go out. Social distance, wear your mask. Think of other people besides yourself. It's really important. Okay, yeah. let's see. Our special version of uh, Five Years Number 10 went out this week and is available on the website now. I have it right here. <clears throat> this guy went out. So you can get it on our website. The regular version will be available at comic shops in late June or early July. It has a different cover. So look for that as well. It feels good to have Diamond kind of back in the mix, and we're looking to get a regular schedule here in the next few weeks. Hopefully things will move forward and books will start becoming available on a regular basis at your comic book shops. Yeah, they said May 20 when yeah. they want to put books in the stores. Yeah. So we are hoping that's the case. Yeah. Anything else going on? That's kind of it right now. I finished the series. So Why don't you ever have anything to add? I, I, I finished the series. That was two weeks, three weeks ago. Oh, it was? Yeah. Oh, I'm still, I'm still writing off that. You're still, you're still aglow with that, are you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let's move on to our questions. All right. Okay. The first question is from Sean Kuruneru. Kuruneru. I hope I didn't butcher that. These are both technical questions today. Okay. So uh, Sean's question is, what scanner do you use for your drawings? And do you scan everything at 1200 DPI? Oh, that's actually a very good question. We use an Epson 1640XL scanner. Uh, I bought it 12 years ago or more, uh, and it has never failed me. Uh, so I've never had to buy the new model. I have the one I bought, the first one I bought. It's a large, uh, it'll handle 11 by 17 paper. Uh, it's just slightly bigger than that. Uh, and I scan at 1200 DPI for a bitmap and at 600 DPI for an RGB or a grayscale. Um, and I actually prefer, most of my books are all scanned for bitmap and then I convert that to grayscale and then um, that that is what ends at grayscale at 600 and then that's what ends up going into the layout for the book and that's where the book is printed. I, that was just still, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> right over your head. <laughs> it's it's only it's only two factors, you know, bitmap or grayscale or RGB. So you and you you experiment with it over the period of your first year and find and when you see it come back in the book, you see what was looked clean and, and crisp and what looked a little mm -hmm. dicey, and you make a note of it. Okay. All right. So our next question is from Tim. Okay. And Tim would like to know, how would you do a double page spread? It's easy enough if it's a solid color like black that connects the two pages, but how would you do it if you had an image that overlapped on both pages? Oh, I do. I have images that overlap on both pages. Uh, and um, what I end up doing is, of course, you, You will have your page template here, and you're drawing on a page template that has you're drawing on a page template that has your two comic book pages, right? So you have two pages. What you end up doing is you cut out that middle one and that middle one, and you actually tape the page together, literally tape it together, so that there is no uh, gutter in in the middle. It's just one one rectangle. Then you draw your art. Then when it's time to scan, you scan one side and then you scan the other side. Um, so you get both pages. And then when you get it into Photoshop, um, 
you clean off that gutter, put them together in Photoshop, and they should match perfectly. There's always a little bit of difference between the top and the bottom because you're working with a scanner that's using a camera, and the camera did its best to, you know, that was that's what one inch was up there, and that's what one inch is down here. And there's always a little bit of adjustment that's required, so you kind of do that and get it all to match. You really focus on the middle of middle of the page and the art, and then if you have to adjust on a line or something, it's very minor. That's it. That's how you do. And then you end up with this, you know, the in Photoshop you end up with the page actually looking that way, and that's what you send to the colorist or whatever. That's what you lay out in your book. And you tape it on the back. I do tape it on the back. <laughs> And uh, I use this uh, white tape, of course, this art tape. And uh, don't let this scare you. If you go into the art store, the Scotch brands, it's like $26. We don't do that. This brand is just the generic artist tape, pro tape, and it's $6. And it lasts a long time. So we end up doing this because it'll go on the paper and not rip it up if you have to tear it off or take it off and reposition it or something like that. So the white tape is what we use. And I, if I had, I don't know if I have any double page spread original art here to show you um, in the, in my archives, but if I did, I would show you. I, I think you do, but yeah. we're not going to. We're not going to dig it out. <laughs> we have to go into the, into the, into the warehouse. Bins. Yeah. It's hard to find. Okay. Well, um, so what are you drawing today? If you think you cannot draw, um, I want to ask you if you can draw a martini glass with a stem. If you can draw a martini glass outline, you can draw a really good looking person. And I'll show you how to do that. So if that's interesting, meet me right here. Sounds good. All right, let's go. Some people who have a, think they cannot draw, they will maybe draw a smiley face um, like that. Everybody can do that, right? But how do you get a more elaborate face? Um, maybe I'll show you how. Maybe I can show you by just drawing a martini glass. Most people can draw a martini glass, don't you think? There, there's a martini glass. Um, if you were to put two dots at the end, for the eyes. Put a line right here for the nose. See it? <laughs> you see it coming? And then uh, shorten up the stem a little bit, but you could leave it right there for now. And there's your mouth. Eyes, nose, mouth. Okay? And you think, well, Terry, that's just about the crudest caveman thing I've ever seen. Oh yeah, well watch this. All you have to do now is give it a give it a bottom give it a top ears go right there on the side you know where the ears go there you go erase the glass and you can do eyebrows for expressions there you just went from smiley face to a real legitimate cartoon face. And uh, if you wanted that to be a woman, okay, we can do that. You just change the hair. Martini glass. Short stem. Okay, martini. Eyes. The bottom of the nose is right there, so that's like the shadow underneath the nose is what that is. And the mouth. Yeah, I would recommend you make a really short stem and bring the mouth up to here. If you bring the mouth up to here, really short stem glass, like that. There's your martini glass. You see my hand shake because I don't have my arm on the table for the camera. Okay, just get that face around it, up in here at the top of the forehead, you know, about that far again. Draw that hair. There 
There are some ears over here on the side, you know that. You can draw earrings if you want. Eyebrows. Everybody needs some eyebrows. And there you go. You have now drawn a really legitimate, uh, good cartoon of a lady. There she is. Um, I want to show you something while we're looking at the just the geometric designs of people. If you bring the neck, say the neck is going from the uh, eyes, or just around the outside of the eyes, come straight down where your mouth is. See how all that lines up? Eyes, mouth, neck. Eyes, mouth, neck. Um, if you are a football player guy, your neck comes out from right underneath your ears, right? Like you're the, the lineman on a college team. But for most of us, and uh, women and men, the neck comes out from underneath the jaw. Anyway, nice little neck. And you wonder about, okay, what about the shoulders? The shoulder, if you put a center line right here, how wide is that head? About that wide? You could do that same distance about right there. There's another head. There's another head width. That head width right there is how far you can go from the middle to the shoulder. And that's the top point of the shoulder. There. Now you have the head sitting on the neck, sitting on the shoulders. And if you come over here and round that off, like that, look what you have. Look what you just drew. There. That's better than your old standard of, hey, look at me, right? Um, I'll show you another thing that works. It also works with um, a box. If you don't want to, if you're against drinking and you don't want to draw martini glass, okay, draw a square. Put eyes at the top corner. In the middle of the box, put the shadow of the nose. Down here is your mouth. Got it? See the geometry of the face, how perfect it is? Put a face around that, you know, just uh, the jaw. You know there's an ears on either side. Go up about that much again. Like that. And let's make this Superman. Because he has a, you know, a nice square jaw. And now you can pull the neck straight out from underneath those ears, like the strong guy he is. And head width. And that would be, the, on a strong guy like him, that would be the start of the shoulder round. So the shoulder round would go out here, like that, see? So that really is just his, um, I used to know what that was called. It's not the trap, it's something else. Um, that line goes down the middle, the head space is the pecs, like that. And if you want to get technical about it, you could do this head height, that head height also is the distance from here to the bottom of the peck. And it would also be the distance on the martini lady. The martini lady has a head width right there. Here's your shoulder line. Head height down to about there. And that's where... Same thing for her shape, right? Down the middle, there you go. That's the geometry that I think a lot of artists figure out um, as they're drawing. They see, start to see the symmetry and the alignment of things and the measuring of things. And that's why some people kind of figure out early on how they can draw people. You're not just trying to draw the lights and shadows that you see all the time. You just kind of figure out the measurements and draw it. Now clearly this lady has those wide apart eyes, but it, at least it gave you the starting point for the eyes and you could now start moving them in and make adjustments for everything to be pretty, right? 
So now I'm adjusting my drawing. And if I didn't want to get into complicated eyes, you can even just keep the raisins and just put some eyelashes on there, and that's a decent cartoon drawing. That This line represents the bottom of the nose, so that if this was the nostrils, the light is coming down here, that's the shadow underneath the nose. So all you're doing from that point on is just making it prettier. The simplest cartoon way to draw that is just to do another upside down triangle like that. And that way you don't get into nostrils and the bridge of the nose because that gets, um, that complicates things. Now you're going for realism. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. Um, sometimes you can have fun with art like that. And, and you think sometimes people give you art lessons and they'll say, start off with an egg shaped head. And every time I was a young guy trying to, trying to learn how to draw, I was thinking, I can't draw an egg shaped head. That right there, I can't do. I, you know what my egg-shaped head looks like when I'm 15? It looks like that. So I just wanted you to know that you don't have to get that kind of control right from day one. Man, it doesn't matter what you're starting with. Just get something in the space, some atomic space going on there, and then start with your eyes and put your eyes in there. And now suddenly you pick out one of these and you'll use it. There's your eyes. There's the bottom of your nose, and there's your mouth. Look, suddenly this guy is presenting himself to you. Look, there's my head. I'll use that one. I could have used one of the other shapes. Look, um, let's go with this one. No. It's like a mask in front of the head. Or we could have used this one. Right here. It's a ghost. Um, it could, doesn't even have to be whatever. Just start looking for the faces inside anything. You know what I mean? The faces are in there because it's just the way the world works. Geometry, shapes, whether it's uh, angles or squares, whatever. Uh, um, anyway, I just want to take that burden off of you. you Learn to draw a perfect egg first. Uh, no, I didn't want to. <laughs> I still don't know how to draw perfect eggs. So that's it, really. I just wanted to show you the geometry and faces, and I hope that this helps uh, in your own drawing. Um, Draw for fun and look for faces in everything because they're there.